So we've talked a lot about why LEDs don't work and why optics matter. And uh, it's actually turned up a lot of questions out there. So I've kind of put together a two part series to answer some of the questions we're getting about why optics do matter and what the differences are. So I wanted to start with uh, kind of these three things I drew on the board. And this first uh, picture here is what an LED looks like with no optics. This kind of upside down balloon is what's called a Lambertian pattern. Uh, and it's really how light comes off of a naked or raw LED. And what we get is we get this high value, let's call it 1500 micromoles, which is your par value directly underneath it. And as you move away, 1500, 100, it, it, it kind of slowly fades away, uh, but you get that high value right in the middle. As we look at what's really available in the market as standard optics, which there's a few companies using them. Uh, they're readily available. They have been used in lighting fixtures like we have in, in, in different buildings around street lights. Uh, what happens is, is the light is focused in a more narrow pattern. Uh, this looks really great when you're trying to spike par values and pretend like something's great uh, from a marketing angle, but it's not really good for your plants because what happens is you might hit 2,000 micromoles per second here, but quickly you're down to 1,000 and then 100. It exponentially reduces the light's uh, energy, but it's really just in one specific area. And what we've done different at science and what our patents are around is this sort of pattern and what's what's interesting about this is that in the middle we actually have our lowest value so as compared to these other two examples we might only see 800 micromoles per second uh, par value in the middle but we'll see a thousand on the edge so we'll see this maybe 10 to 20 percent difference between the middle and the edge but putting the light the majority of the light on this edge we call it on the angle that's what our patents are on. And that's what allows, when you stack these lights together, light penetrates much deeper, much further, much better uh, into the canopy. The second thing it does is it makes sure that especially compared to this, which is what most LEDs are, we're not just blasting light everywhere, we're focusing it over the canopy. So uh, as the end to this first part of this conversation, I just wanna quickly show you a naked or raw LED light versus a optic science uh, LED light. So, so this light I've got here is a uh, non-optic LED light. You'll see that the light is definitely the brightest directly underneath it. I'm holding it at about 36 inches off the ground. If you look at the wall behind me, you'll see the light is just splattered on the wall uh, and it slowly moves away in a linear fashion from the brightest spot in the middle to the weakest at the edge. Now, if instead we look at what optics can do, and not standard optics, but science's patented optics, when I hold the light in the same position, uh, you can see this sharp cutoff in the carpet. There's almost no light on the walls. Um, and we have all of the light focused on what could be and should be the grow bed underneath here in a very even pattern, which is what we're ultimately looking for. So hopefully that gives you further insight as to what we're talking about with the difference in optics out there. Uh, and stay tuned for part two. We'll get a little bit deeper into what this means when we put multiple lights together.